This video is going to be a film study look at the impact that Michael Pierce had in his, his dominant performance Sunday afternoon against the Arizona Cardinals. It really shouldn't be a surprise to us that he makes plays in his tenure with the Ravens, his second tenure, that is. He's been a physically explosive and impact player. It just hasn't been this many plays all put together in one game. Got film of him from, from the first game he played with the Ravens in 2022, making a jaw-dropping play for a nose tackle. And that's where we're going to start this video. Yes, this is a video from 2022, week one against the Jets. It's a zone-dropping nose tackle at 350 pounds, getting out here and forcing a fumble. Granted, the Jets recovered it, but that's a very unique play for a guy that big and that agile. Same play from the end zone angle. He's in a shade, one technique. I'll refer to that again later. Dropping out of there, has the wherewithal to get there and then get his hands involved in a tackle. He's made plays this year for the Ravens as well. Like I said, second stint with us. He's the type of guy that you just can't down block with one player when he's in a one technique or a shade. Kind of Some people call it a shade, some people call it a one. In any case, you just can't down block him with one guy and expect to get a whole heck of a lot of everything done to that side, to the play side. Great in short yardage situations just because he just takes people where he wants them to go. Here he is in that shade or that one technique, and this is very similar to the fourth down alignment that I'm going to show you against the Cardinals from Sunday afternoon. Him and Matabike basically in um, inside shade ones, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it a two eye at times. He'd be a little bit wider than that. He takes people where he wants them to go in short yardage situations. Oh, by the way, he's got a fumble recovery this year. I forgot about this play, to be honest with you. David Ojabo's first sack of the season, I guess his only sack at this point, only full sack. Pierce is the guy who jumps on the football late in the game. The game was already decided, but this is a dude who's been making impact plays all year long. But what he did against the Cardinals Sunday, against the run and against the pass, this is a defensive player of the week performance, if you ask me. This is second quarter. This is the fourth and one. This is during a, a very interesting pair of play calls by the Cardinals. Third and one to finish the third quarter. They do a play action, and Oway nearly sacks Josh Dobbs, and Josh Dobbs escapes, able to throw an incomplete pass. They go for it on the first play of the second quarter, and you can see that Pierce is the guy who gets his hand up to deflect this ball that's clearly intended for Marquise Brown. I think Patrick Queen's got a bead on it, but in any case, it, they didn't even get the opportunity to make the play because Pierce is just everywhere. End zone angle, same play in this 2 eye inside shade of the guard. Just basically takes the center back on the train tracks, bull rushes him into the quarterback, has his eyes on the quarterback the whole time, the wherewithal to get his hands up and deflect the pass. That's one fourth down stop. We used to count fourth down stops as five points on our defensive productivity chart because we felt like it was important to stress to the kids that you want to make plays when it's fourth down. This is early second quarter still, about 10 minutes left. The Cardinals' third possession, it's a second and six, a one-yard run, a demarcado, Pierce is just a man. You just can't move him. I thought the announcers did a horrible job of talking about how well he was playing and talking about technique. Being able to move laterally while you're being combo blocked, meaning you got a combo here, and then someone is theoretically going to move up to the inside linebacker level. The moment that the guy moves up, in this case the center, Pierce wins to the play side. I, call, I feel like the announcers missed a huge opportunity to talk to people about what happens when there's a combo block? As a D-tackle, you may not win here, but you damn sure can lose. And Michael Pierce doesn't lose. And when he gets the opportunity to win, when the, the, the first blocker, the center, works up to the second level, he wins to the front side, one-yard gain on a second and six. Two plays later, you got this fourth and one. Really horrible play call, if you ask me, by Arizona. He's inside here with Matabike. He's actually the backside D-tackle. I was wrong about this in the reaction video. He kind of Goldberg's uh, DeMarcado. A, a horrible play call, I think, by Arizona. Reverse pivot. Handoff to the running back. I don't know about you. I've seen these play calls often in the NFL in the last two or three years. Haven't seen them work a whole lot. There's no downhill nature to it. But the cool thing is, look at Pierce. He's the backside guy. He's going to fold over the top of Matabike, and I'll show you the end zone angle in a moment so you can get a little bit more appreciation of it. And he just Goldberg tackles DeMarcado. I thought he was short. Uh, I thought he may have gotten it initially, and then Pierce finished him off and made it look short, but on the replay to me it looks short the whole time. So here's what I'm talking about. Very similar to that Texans alignment that I showed you. That's why I showed you that play, except Matabike and, and 
Pierce is on back, they're on opposite sides. Pierce is going to fold over the top, and he can make this play because it's such a slow developing run on a fourth and one, which is why I think it's a really bad play call, not giving the running back an opportunity to get downhill now and just get a half a yard or get six inches out of it. Great contact on the center by Pierce to shed him, fold over the top. He's getting held right now, still able to make the play. The center was was holding or attempting to hold. He was just not able to do so because Pierce is just a monster. This was a huge play while the offense was struggling after our first possession. Didn't get we you know we missed the field goal on the second possession a fifty three yarder, okay, but this offense still wasn't developing much to the point where we got an interception late in the second quarter to go up fourteen seven. Pierce only got better in the second half as crazy as that is, really most of this is going to come on the third uh, third in the third quarter first possession for the Cardinals of the third quarter after we go three and out and punt we actually punted three times in the third quarter. It's a combo block on Pierce. Brent Urban does a great job from a five technique. Pierce is in a one, so he's in the A-gap. So he's going to get comboed by the center and the right guard, and Urban is going to do a great job just standing the right tackle up, framing him up. Roquan tries to fit. It ends up kind of in the same gap as Pierce. Pierce and Urban are able to make the tackle, half tackle each. End zone angle, here's what I'm talking about. One technique, shade, whatever you want to call it in the A-gap. Five technique, urban. So this is an under front out of the 3-4 or 4-3, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> you can see the combo kind of dislodges Pierce, regains his footing, and he's able to get involved with urban. It is a five-yard gain, so successful from the Cardinal standpoint, but you just can't get this guy out of there. Second and 10, two plays later. Pierce is again up top, but he's in a three technique this time. I think him and Matt Abike are both in three techniques. We would call this a split 40. It's a dangerous defense to play, but if you have two badass three techniques, then you can, A, you can get away with it, and B, you can dominate a lot of space. I'll show you the end zone angle so you can see what I'm talking about. But look at him get his hips to the front side. This is an athletic move for a big guy while he's being dealt with from the guard. Just wins on the front side. If you can't reach a three technique, you're not running off tackle against a split 40. Here's what I mean when I say split 40. It's an old school defense. Not a lot of people play it nowadays, but it's a badass stuff. You got a nine technique to the strong side in OA, three with Matabike, three with Pierce, and on the backside five in Clowney. Trying to run it to the weak side. I love the three technique to the weak side. Watch him get his hips into the hole. He doesn't have extremely long arms. It's just his, his body frame is different from Clowney or Oway or some of those other guys. But he gets his hips in there, squares up, sheds the blocker, one-yard loss. Just a badass football play, if you ask me. I thought the announcers missed a golden opportunity to highlight some of the things he was doing. They have all the technology in the world, people in the truck who have the end zone angle uh, immediately and could have given people a little bit more appreciation than some of the things they said, which I thought was pretty bogus. So third and 11 after that play, this is going to be the sack and the force fumble. He's in a shade one. I think I'll give you the end zone angle here in a moment. Unfortunate that we're not able to recover this by Clowney. A great opportunity for Clowney, who I thought jumped off sides, to, to add another play to his ledger this year. Just not able to scoop the football. I've been in those situations before where you're watching your players and, and A, you want them to make the play for your team, but B, you want them to make it, the play for them. But let's get back to Pierce. It's just another example of how I think Mike McDonald is creating chaos. This is an intentionally slow release by Pierce. Owe coming in to set the pick, and then Pierce fold over the top. Really not a great job drawing that there, but you'll get a better uh, idea of it from the end zone angle. I did think the announcers at least tried to cover the stunt nature of it, the pick by Owe. We do a lot of this stuff, and we're successful at it. We don't need a... $12, $15 million a year edge rusher to do this. Intentionally slow get off by Pierce. Oway's supposed to get upfield and then come down onto the center. Basically bring the guard with him. My man Pernell McPhee used to be the master at this stuff. Bringing the guard with him by hooking the inside arm. Oway kind of tries to do that. Explodes into the center. Pierce folds over the top, sheds him. Beautiful play, beautiful job, if you ask me, of of getting in there and making a play. Unfortunately for us, we're not able to get the recovery, but we did force a punt during that time period when, look, our offense was really struggling. We really had a, a ton of trouble offensively. And these plays that Pierce made, these fourth down stops and then this sack, I thought, I thought played a huge role. The Arizona Cardinals turned the football over twice 
And we only beat them 31-24. Yeah, you know, we're up, we're up 24 to 7 at one point. And then they get a touchdown and, and we're able to come back and match it with a touchdown. So and I intend to cover that as well. Our 10th and 11th possession, again, clutch. We've had a number of those late in the season, but here's our possessions in the second half. You know, first half we'll go touchdown and then miss field goal, punt, punt, and then we get the touchdown after the short, after the short field created by the Brandon Stevens interception. During the time when Michael Pierce is dominating here, show, some of the film I'm showing you, here's what our offense did. Punt, punt, punt. Three consecutive punts to, th- to start the third quarter. These We needed these plays, is what I'm saying. We needed these plays to because of how disconnected our offense was for those two time frames after the second possession and then that third quarter. Tenth and eleventh possessions was awesome. I thought Munkin and Lamar and our O-line and running backs did a great job. But Michael Pierce, if you ask me, really bridged the gap for uh, for our team when we were disconnected offensively and not flowing. The deflection on the first fourth down that I showed you, the fourth and one stop on that reverse pivot dive play to DeMarcado, and then this forced fumble that we damn near pick up and scoop and score by Clowney. I know we kind of whiffed on the ball, but we're, we have an opportunity to scoop and score there. I don't know about you. It was fun to see Michael Pierce play that way. He seems like a pretty cool dude. Uh, not fun for the offensive line to play against, certainly not in week eight by the Cardinals. You guys let me know what you thought of Michael Pierce's play, the way I broke down some of the plays. I intend to show you some film of our first possession uh, here before the Monday night football games game start. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, enjoy this film study video, look at Michael Pierce's play and Sunday's win over the Cardinals, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.